So, good news for coffee drinkers. Uh, more good news. This is not the first time this has uh, been seen, but a very good, very large study came out uh, in July, July 2nd of um, 2018, talking about uh, coffee drinkers are more likely to live longer, and the decaf may do the trick as well. Now, <clears throat> this was covered in NPR. Um, you may have heard it there. It was covering a large, good study published on July 2nd in the uh, JAMA Internal Medicine. And it was done at the UK Biobank. We'll talk about what that is in just a minute. Um, it was a large prospective cohort uh, trial. Perspectives are harder to, to bias, but you can do it. Um, half a million people. And they looked at one to eight cups per day and found an improvement in lifespan. They uh, looked specifically at um, genetic polymorphisms. Now, what does that mean? Well, <clears throat> there are several different genes that have been associated with varying levels of metabolism. So you can be a fast caffeine metabolizer or a slow caffeine metabolizer, because this is talking about metabolism of caffeine. I'm a slow metabolizer, so the caffeine stays in my system a long time. And it, sure enough, if I drink caffeine at night, I will have a significant problem sleeping, as uh, many middle-aged people do. Problems sleeping are, uh, can lead to significant health problems, including diabetes. So <clears throat> this is uh, the genetic uh, metabolism of caffeine is a very important twist to this new study. Um, this study provided further evidence. Good news for uh, uh, coffee drinkers. Coffee is a part of a healthy diet. A little bit more details. Um, <clears throat> now, I mentioned that there are ways to uh, bias even prospective studies. One of those ways would be what's called a participation bias. If you look at the UK Biobank, this study, and the other studies coming out of the biobank, they invited 9.2 million people to participate, and they got half a million to participate. So one thing you always have to remember for any study coming out of the UK Biobank is the potential for participation bias. In other words, and let me just give uh, a little bit more detail on that. Are so you're going to be if you participate in the in this study in the UK Biobank, you're likely to be more interested in your health, which means you're likely to put more effort into keeping your weight down, managing your lifestyle, exercising, um, reading about supplements, things like that. Folks that are, are again, uh, more focused on health issues. If that happens to uh, lead to changes in your diet or ch changes in um, mortality, things that are being studied here, you, you do have the potential for some bias. I don't think that's likely given, uh, given what we're talking about. But again, something to remember and think about in terms of looking at long-term prospective studies. Uh, they looked at one to eight cups of coffee in the past. This has not been, um, in the past they looked up to four cups. And uh, the General scientific evidence at that point was that up to four cups improved your health. Beyond that, probably not. Now, what they saw here was not an increase with each cup of coffee. It looked like up to eight cups of coffee, you still did get that improvement. Um, <clears throat> they saw similar associations for instant coffee, ground coffee, and decaf. So good news for decaf drinkers like me. Um, <clears throat> So, I mentioned the UK Biobank a couple of times. What is it? Well, you may have heard of Framingham. In fact, a lot of people have heard of Framingham and they don't know what it is. Framingham is a small community near Harvard, near Boston, where uh, Harvard researchers went out and said, look, we'd like to do some long-term studies. We'd like to create a bank of uh, health information for the citizens. Uh, blood studies, urine studies, um, surveys on health habits, 
and then follow their mortality. And then go back and you can do several other studies. You can add, you can do something like this out of there. And that's where the cardiovascular disease studies for Framingham came from. Uh, people at Hopkins had the same kind of study. It was in Hagerstown, Maryland, which is about three hours away from Baltimore and Hopkins. This is another version of it, the UK Biobank, but it started much more recently and it's got a major significant twist. Um, as they mentioned earlier, they invited 9.2 uh, UK citizens, 9.2 million. Uh, they got half a million participants. They got the same things, uh, frozen serum and they froze it, urine, urine and they froze it, uh, medical history, blood pressure, um, BMI, nutritional history, but they also got genetics. You're going to see that uh, genetics added to all of these large uh, populational uh, studies, these uh, biobank, these uh, data centers like Framingham uh, and others. Now, <clears throat> Remember I asked uh, the question a minute ago, what is it about coffee that's doing this? If you, if you see it, whether it's calf or deca uh, caffeinated or decaffeinated, and it's not impacted by genetic metabolism of caffeine, you have to wonder, is it really caffeine? And here's what a couple of the experts say. Um, Walter Willett at Harvard uh, did one of the studies that showed a 15% decrease in death among men and women. He says it's not caffeine. In fact, most of these experts say it's not the caffeine. There are uh, different nutrients, phytochemicals. Phyto means plant, chemical means chemical. So there are a lot of other chemicals. Um, examples Dr. Willett gave, lignans, uh, quinides, and magnesium, which may decrease insulin resistance and inflammation. Um, Christopher Gardner from Stanford, who directs a lot of research, uh, nutrition and prevention in the a nutrition research in the Stanford Prevention Research Center. Uh, Dr. Gardner said there are thousands of chemicals in the coffee bean that may drive this. He mentioned um, the same thing. He said, Type 2 diabetes and cardiovascular disease are uh, probably impacted by this. So then that makes you ask the question, well, didn't coffee have a bad rap? 20, 30 years ago it did. And here's what the issue is, according to Dr. Willick. Originally, it was associated with drink, uh, smoking cigarettes. And uh, it's really clear. Coffee helps but it doesn't help enough to decrease the danger associated with smoking cigarettes. So now that they've done the studies, and this study, for example, looked at um, measured cigarette use and was able to look at that and uh, tease that out. Since they've t done studies now which tease out cigarettes, um, they've shown that coffee is actually very health healthy. Uh, one other component, uh, the doc from Stanford said, you know what, this may just be something, it may not be a chemical at all. It may just be the habit of getting a warm liquid, relaxing, and feeling good as part of your morning. So thank you for your interest and attention.